Hello folks, hopefully you can all hear me okay. Uh, welcome back to November one day two. Today we're going to be trying to make a candy themed material, just like a speed material in Substance Designer. Uh, and yeah, I'm thinking when it comes to candies, my favourites are jellies. So I figured we might try and make some gummy bears, maybe some jelly worms. Uh, I'll just slow this music down a smidge. Yeah, I think that'd be a good thing to do. I've not done much uh, like sort of shape forming in designer for ages so this should be fun to get into today just combining a bunch of shapes together jamming them smashing them in and making something new from it so uh yeah let's crack on let's see how we get on with it so i'm going to show you my reference first so this is what we've got you all know gummy worms um if we get fancy we might add some sugar to them make them a little bit sour uh we've got some gummy worms as well gummy bears gummy worms uh, and then maybe sour variant to them and maybe even some spogs if we get time uh that'd be a little more awkward but Let's see what time we've got. I've got a feeling we're not even going to get through the bear, but let's find out, shall we? Um, by the way, sorry if there's any extra sounds today. Um, it's very, very windy and rainy outside, and I've had to crack a window a little bit so that I don't die of heat exhaustion like I nearly did yesterday. Um, and also, it's close to bonfire night, which means that there's fireworks going off every now and again. So if you hear a loud bang, don't worry, I'm not under attack, it's just fireworks. Uh, right, so yeah, let's crack on with this bad boy. Let's make us a little jelly gummy bear. Um, I've moved the 3D view to down here as well. It made more sense because you can have a slightly bigger viewport for you guys. Uh, and since both of these need like a square view, it made more sense to have them side by side rather than give this this whole bottom part on its own. And then now I've got more access to my library and stuff as well, should I need it. Because like yesterday, I'm going to forget what some things are called. It's still coming back to me. By the way, the thing I was looking for yesterday when I was looking for a spiral, it's called Swirl. It's right there. The whole time, it was right under my nose and I couldn't find the bugger. So... That happens sometimes, doesn't it? Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to create this gummy bear just from some shapes. Right? It's not going to be perfect. This isn't going to be some uh, fine art gummy bear fabrication. This will simply be a few shapes mashed together <laughs> to make something that kind of resembles a gummy bear. So first thing we're going to do, uh, if we grab just a little power blade and we transform it like so. Um, right now, you can see we've got a bunch of repeating textures. You get that on this by default if you tile it. So to turn that off, you go up to here, the tiling mode, set this to absolute, and then set it to no tiling. And then it's just a lonesome, lonesome little thing on its own. Um, now, what I'm going to do with that, I'm going to mirror that so that the ears are equally distant, equidistant, if you will. See, we're starting, see, we're already starting to get somewhere. Um, I'm actually stretch this a little bit as well. Oops, I was do that. Stretch it out a little bit, tilt that round a little bit, and see already we're getting like you know little ears going on, a little ear situation. Um, so we can just keep doing that. We just keep making shapes, adjust them, add them together. Uh, so let's make a little head for the guy. And the good thing is because most of this will be based on like a sphere, so like a power blade in this case, um, we can probably just keep using that and then use this transform to adjust it. So do the same again you can only go so far with this sometimes you need to make the shapes out of flat black and white colors and then you can add like the gradient itself uh, that works a lot better for more complex shapes but something this simple this shouldn't really be an issue because the problem that can happen is when you when you start squashing stuff with a gradient on it it kind of pinches the gradient at the bits where it's stretched out oh, sorry um so yeah we want to avoid that but with this it should be fine um okay so yeah same again we're going to squish this little dude down and again, he's tiling. We don't want that, do we? We've already spoke of this. No tiles for you, sir. Uh, yeah, so let's give him a little fat little head. A little, little fat head over here. He knows what he is. And if we go up here and go to add sub. Uh, sorry, no, add sub. Min darken. Max lighten. <laughs> Come on. Oh, wait, I've not connected it. That helps. Step one, actually connect your things together. See, so we're already starting to get something. This head's too big. Don't tell him that. It's rude. But it is. Um, so, yeah, move that up there. Get a little, little better head action going on. Like I said, we're not going for perfection here. What we can do is we can add... Um, we can make some adjustments to this afterwards, but let's get the main body in for now, and then we'll work on the rest of it individually. Uh, just give me one second. I want to see if I can move where the chat is on my screen over here because I keep missing it because it's on all the way on the right 
If I can move that to the left, which I think you can adjust that on this layout editor. Does that work? Uh, no. Chat. Is chat even on that list? Chat is not on that list. Okay. In that case, no. Forgive me. Let me get back to where I was, which I think is that button. Yes. Okay. We're still live. We're still live. Good. Okay. I've not used this streaming software much before. This is different to what I used to use. I used to just primarily use OBS, which I still use for recording my podcast and stuff like that. Um, but for doing this stream, I use Slobs, Streamlabs OBS, and it's really cool. It's very nice. It used to be not as good as it is now. It, I used to want to use it all the time, but it didn't support text for some reason. I mean, it said it supported it, but it never worked. And uh, it didn't have studio mode either, which it, it's got now. So yay. Yay for Slobs. Uh, we are still live, right? Yes. Okay, still live. Good. Uh, okay, anyway, on with the gummy bear. Let's give him a chonky little body. Chonky time. And we've got a slightly different playlist on today because the one yesterday was boring me a bit. Today we have got Stream Beats Synthwave by Harris Heller, who says it's copyright free for Twitch, YouTube, and late night DeLorean rides. See, that's my kind of guy. My kind of guy. And he specified YouTube, so it shouldn't get flagged or anything. I like the last playlist that I used the other day. And it specified Twitch, uh, but I guess somehow YouTube was like, nah, we don't like that. So, whatever. Uh, okay, so anyway, back to this. Same thing again. Now, I mean, I could just duplicate these transforms, but I've already messed with them, and I find I don't like restretching stuff out. It probably doesn't do anything in this, but I feel like it damages it. It's just, it, it, I'm in that Photoshop mentality of when you shrink something down and then hit enter, then you rescale it up, it would be ruined. So, anywho, you don't care about that. Let's get back to tiling. Tiling, uh, no tiling, and then we go roof. Uh, if we plug this straight in now, we can see um, see what it's doing live. That's going to be better for placement and stuff like that. So if we just again go to max lighting, see because max lighting makes them kind of like intersect with each other, which is, which is what we're after. We don't want stuff just sort of blending through. We want it to actually intersect. Um, have I uncentered things? I have. Okay. We'll just adjust this a second. Boom. That's better. Alright, so, yeah, we've got his fat head in place. Let's get his chunky body in place. I think his fat head's been adjusted as well. Yes. Why must I do these things? Ooh, this is funky, isn't it? Wah, 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 wah. See, so we might actually use a different shape for his body, but let's just crack on, because we're doing a speed material, aren't we? Um, and we can also use levels to adjust how high and low these parts are. So what we can do here, uh, if we pull up the levels in here... Now, see, at the moment, the body, everything's the same height. It's all got the same information going on with it. But if we lower the white value in the body, you see it starts to go backwards, and then more of the head comes through. So if I turn it all the way off, you can see the whole of the head here. Whereas if I start to bring it back in... It starts to intersect, which is what we want. Uh, maybe something like that. It's a bit further back. Um, maybe too far back. Yeah. Uh, we definitely want the ears to be further back because they are further back in the model. That's how the model works. Uh, so, yeah, let's go, go to the ears. Uh, we can do the same thing again. Get our levels. Just whack it in. Oops, I don't know what I just did. Dissolve. No, nope, that's not what I wanted at all. I oh, to the levels, good sir. I want to move my mic a little bit to the right today, so hopefully I can see my keyboard better. And <laughs> I don't keep going, what's that? Where's the button gone? We can't see it. Yeah, we'll be all right today. This is a funky jam, isn't it? Good. What is this? This is called Notice Me. I'm assuming they mean Notice Me Senpai. That kind of thing. Uh, right, so yeah, we've got levels in here. We're going to adjust it slightly. Uh, so that the ears are a little bit further back. Let's go back to the end. Why not? Eh? Push them little eeries back a bit. I try to move them in a bit as well. Um, let's go back to our transform. There you go. It's kind of cool that this is just a black and white image, but it will create a 3D shape for us. How funky is that? Um, so we can actually preview this. I know it's not ready yet, but let's let's preview it as we go along, shall we? Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So. I will pop that into there, pop that into there, set this to plane like we did yesterday, 
Right, let's just give it a flat colour for now. Uh, let's maybe make this just a standard grey. Alright, and then let's make it a little bit rougher for now. Just because I find it's kind of hard to constantly look at this shiny one for me. Oh look, you know what? Yeah, let's give it a slight bit of, just a slight bit of roughness. You win, okay? Just, you win. There you go. It's grayscale. Boom. There you go. So it's still shiny, but it's not as shiny. You know what I'm saying? So we're starting to get a little bit of fun 3D shapage going on. Like I said, we're not going for anything too advanced here. We're not we're not trying to start the, uh, the Bob Ross school of gummy bears. We're just trying to do a little gummy experiment, have a bit of fun with it. Right, so this time, let's see if we can get a bit of cylinder action going on. We could use a capsule. And then if you use a capsule, you could extend it a little bit like that. Uh, I think this would be good for the arms. But actually, we could, instead of that, let's just try one of the uh, shape extrude nodes. Shape extrude. That's a very expensive node, but it might give us better results for the arms, you know, sort of look positioned in 3D. So, let's figure this bit out. Do, do, do. Uh, cylinder, we want it to be a little bit on the slimmer side. Bevel height, we want it to be, well, not really a little bit beveled and then set the curve to full so it's smooth. There we go. That's the kind of thing we're after. And then if we rotate that round to be in roughly the kind of position that we want. Something like that. Let's see if we can just pinch the top of that a little bit. I mean, we can give this a custom curve if we want to. It's just it's a bit... I don't think we need to really, but we could. So if we go to profile, uh, vertical gradient, It'll see profile gradient there. It's gone off. So if we give, uh, if we set a gradient linear one, and then give it a curve like that, let me just turn it sideways so we can't just see what it's doing. See, so at the moment it's going from black to white, so it's really sharp. Uh, we can adjust this though. So we actually want this to be pretty. Pretty uniform throughout. You can see my computer's already chugging. It doesn't like this node at all. There you go. I'm just going to make it a bit rounder. So now we can do that. Place it where we, where we want it. So here we be like. There-ish. I'm just thinking angle-wise, not position-wise, because position-wise, we're going to position it now. Blend. So we're going to grab that guy, put him on there. Grab this guy, put him on here. And then we also want to add a transform so we can move him. Otherwise, he'll just be stuck in the middle like that. And we don't want that. Don't nobody want to be stuck in the middle. Just ask Malcolm. He bloody hated it. Right. Um, move that little chap down there. Resizzle him a bit. Turn tiling off. I okay, no, see, like we were saying before, it's that the levels are too. Um, ow, sorry, that was my knee cracking again. Uh, the levels are too high, so we're just going to adjust that. Actually, it doesn't seem that high, but might just be my eyes. Dun, 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 dun. No, we should be protruding further out. Okay, it's just the shape behind; it's not um, wide enough at the bottom, so we might have to change the shape that we're using for the body. This one. Uh, we can adjust that a little bit. Do, do, do. What we can do is just duplicate this, turn this into the capsule like we did, like I showed you before, and then that way we can get a bit more stretch on it and it'll be thicker at the bottom. Just turn that around. Gonna get plugged into here, so it doesn't matter about the scale right now. 
Actually, we should scale it up. Two. Double his width. Ooh. I said his width, you melon. I forgot we rotated it. Okay. Bit of a chunkier body to work with. <laughs> it looks a bit daft, but let's keep working with it for now. We can always make adjustments to it. Uh... Let's add a little gradient action. Wait, wrong one. What am I trying to do here? <laughs> Alright, leave that for now. Warp. Again, I've completely forgotten what I used to use for this. Let's get a power blood that's been squashed a little bit. Use that. Grab a transform, cheeky little transform. So we don't want this to tile. Basically, we want to see the way it kind of makes it a bit more rotund to the bottom. We want to do that, but not with a hard edge. So let's smooth this off with a blur. There you go, it's got a little bit of a pot belly action going on now. Uh, right. We won't go too extreme with it, but that looks alright for now. What I might actually do with that is give it a little cheeky little mirror so he's got similar action going on up top, but that might not work out well. Let's find out. Uh, mirror Y, invert, see this way you should have somewhere for his arms and somewhere for his legs to go. Yeah, chunky boy. <laughs> Looks kind of goofy at the moment but we're still working on it so don't worry about it. Just move his head down a bit with this uh, mirror offset. His neck, I mean. There we go. He's got a bit of space now. It's like he's got little shoulders and little legs that stick out. And then we can blend his little leggies in there. Uh, what we're going to do is set the shape extrude to be uh, minus one to one. Actually, no. We'll stick zero to one. That'll be okay for now. And we'll connect this. One little leggy. Yay. And to save making another shape, we can just mirror this one. Because that's a cheaper node to use. Hey, logic. Who would have thunk I'd use logic one day? And then even better, we can use it for his arms, possibly. Probably shouldn't do, because they're different. But we're just making... We're making a rough one, aren't we? So, again, mirror grayscale. I could have duplicated that one. But I'm feeling like a maverick today, so why not? Blend, blend that on there, max lighten, boom, and then invert the mirror on this because it's currently blank, completely blank. 
Oh, look at that. It's got funky eyes. We don't want funky eyes, do we? So we need to use the offset again, like we did before. And look at that. It's got some little arms. Now, I'm probably not going to use that because I'd like them to have smaller arms than legs. But at the same time, are we that bothered? Are we really? Um, what I can do to give the illusion his arms are smaller is I can adjust the levels on them so they're a little bit further back. I'm not saying it would be an illusion like, you know, a perspective trick. Oh, wait, that's mirrored, isn't it? Uh, okay, I can still do that. I can still do it. Give me a sec. All right, so what, we do, what we're going to do is we've currently got the arms there. Actually, we want to do this anyway because we don't want to mess up. At the moment, if I was to get rid of this, this would still have legs because I'm using mirror. So it's doubling up the legs, which we don't want anyway. So I'm going to use this a, uh, a crop at the bottom here. If I adjust that, see the way it kind of wipes off bits of the picture. I'm going to knock that just below the arms. And then I can use my levels on this and it won't affect the legs. So if you keep an eye on this, it shouldn't affect these. Say so shouldn't. Because things always have a way of going wrong for me. There we go. Pushing back just a little bit. In fact, I don't like that it's cutting through because we've got it set to uh, max lighting. So what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to set it to uh, add. And then I'll reduce the strength on that. That might be a bit better. I don't know, actually. What am I on about? Max lighting. And then we're going to have to adjust it differently. So we've made the actual shape have more like white concentration in the middle and then push the whole thing back a little bit. I'm not very happy with how the shape of that is though. It's not very like, obvious what's going on, you know. Um, to be fair, the curve is pretty bland. Go and adjust this curve a little bit, shall we? So this will make them smaller at the ends, which we kind of want. Oops. I'm going to use this. Try it right down, see if we can get like a rounded end situation. Increase the bevel height. Breathe a bit more life into it. I'm not going to lie, it's looking a tad weird. <laughs> um, right, what else can we do with this? Dun, 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 dun. Oh, we don't want to squash it like that, do we? That's bad. Controls the overall length of the extrusion, which we don't want it to be too short, but we also don't want it to be like super long. So somewhere, where I think it was somewhere around there. That's a bit better. That will, we're still getting like a clipping on the end. Um, I don't like that. So we can fix that by. Let's see. Will this fix it? If we set the scale of this, oh, let me just say it before it crashes. Um, set the scale of this to 2K, right? And then we set the downscale multiplier to 2. Did that help it at all? So it's a bit smoother on the sides. It's not, still not perfect. Far from it. But it's a little bit better. Well, everything's smooth now. Let's just undo that. Let's undo it. <laughs> mm. 
My watch is all wub, 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 again. I love um, smart watches, but it can get really annoying at times. Sometimes you just don't want to hear wub, 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 when you're doing something. Wait, have I done this with the curve? I wonder why I've got the harsh edge. I feel like... Yeah. My bad. Also, the extrusion... Uh, the bevel intensity. There we go. Because we wanted a bit of a flat edge on it, but not much. Yeah, the angle might be a bit too extreme as well, so let's just adjust that a little bit. Just move it up. Now this will affect both legs and both arms, so we've got to be careful doing this. Looks a little bit better. It's not great. <laughs> like I said, I've not done this sort of shape form and stuff in so long. It's fun to do though. You know when you're just trying to jam stuff together to make other stuff. It's an interesting little exercise. It's a funky jam. Bam, 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 bam. So I think we will give them different arms. Just looking a bit uniform, you know. Um, so even though it's a bit expensive, I'm probably just going to duplicate this. And then work it the same way we did over here. But we're going to skip this part. So if I, if I grab all these... Place them down there. Replace that. And this time just delete that. Uh, and we want this to be up top. So let me see. Let me see. There's the legs. There's the arms. So I'll move this over here. So now we've got no arms because it's got double legs. So if we use transform here, we can move these into position. Oh, we can also get rid of the crop now as well. We don't want to keep that there just in case we mess up later. We cut something off we don't mean to. All that kind of stuff. Because um, there's nothing to indicate on there that it's been cropped, which is kind of annoying. So it's such an easy thing to overlook that that's, had, that's been changed. For the longest time, I didn't even know that was there. It's just one of those settings you stumble across one day and you go, bloody hell, how did I not know about that? All right, so we're going to get this shape. We're going to... Point it a bit more inwards. And down a bit. See, it's already looking a little bit better. Move it up a smidge. Oops. Right, now I'm going to increase the height on this a little bit because I want it to really pop out. Uh, so at the moment, I've got my height set to... Actually, 15 is already a bit, a bit extreme, but let's go with 20 just to really get a feel for it. <laughs> this is extremely soft. We don't want it this soft, I don't think. <clears throat> I mean, what happened to the Caramac? <laughs> I decided to do some jellies instead. It's a bit more of a challenge. So I'm making a, I'm making a jelly bear out of these random shapes. So we started with a circle and we're gradually building them up. 
into this gummy bear, which we're still working on. Right, so we want his arms to go back a bit more than it, they are doing here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a gradient to the shape. Um, let's see the best way of doing this. Gradients linear. And then transform 2D. This is a bit of a cheeky way of doing it, but this is the way we're doing it, so that's how it is. Dun, 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 dun. We shrink that down to the size we need it. Oh, we want it to be flipped. And then we blend these together. Oops, sorry. Uh, let's use a multiply for this for now. And put it where it needs to be. See, so if we... Without the multiply, it looks like that. With the multiply, it's got more of a gradient. So it should have more of a, uh, a prominence. So let's see. Are the squares the nodes, and that's the DNA of the models. If you change them, it changes the model. Yeah, pretty much. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah. So this isn't a model, this is just a flat plane with the texture on it. And this black and white information tells the plane how to work. So if it's white, it goes higher up. If it's black, it goes lower down. That's why this black bit here is just completely flat. And this white part here is the highest point. But yeah, if I change anything, like if I go over here and change this paraboloid into a bell, see it completely changes the shape of it because it's feeding all the way through this stuff. So any changes you make at the beginning will affect the end. So it's, it's an interesting little process. <laughs> I'm not really liking the results I'm getting right now, but that's okay. We're still working on it. All right, I'm going to put a, uh, a gradient on the body as well so it's got a little bit of a a little bit of a gradient so that the, the, the belly is a bit tubbier because that's the idea isn't it the belly is meant to be a bit tubbier because the poor little lad he likes his sweets he is a sweet it makes sense that he likes sweets um, or is that cannibalism either way he's a fat boy and we've got to fix it so he's a happy fat boy that's cool it's like a nervous system yes it is it's like a nervous system basically yeah so everything the, all these nodes work kind of like the way the brain's like synapses work whatever it's called so you can't have one without the other and they all affect each other in some way or another uh, but just a case of just blending stuff together mashing things together uh, especially when you're doing stuff like this which are just speed materials there's no finesse to this normally i wouldn't be doing things so um sort of haphazardly put a bit more thought into stuff um but i don't really have time for thought right now okay so now let's give him a little podgy belly and boom there we go, that's much better. We've got a little podgy situation. Look at that guy. Look at him. Little podgy belly on him. Uh, now, I'm not liking the shape of his arms. Let's go fix that. Should see the things he says about me. Um, okay. I don't know if using a shape for this is the right thing to do. I keep kicking the cable on my... Uh, keep kicking the cable on my mic. So sorry if it keeps making a noise. Like CP. Yeah, I guess I guess it's like CP. If if you affect something in the brain, it buggers up some of the rest of the stuff. If you want to put it that way. Um, just to clarify, folks in the chat, my brother Jack he has CP, so he's allowed to to talk about that stuff. <laughs> I'm not just being weirdly offensive for no reason whatsoever. Out the blue, that'd be strange, and I wouldn't do that. All right, so we've got this. Um, you know, I have a mantra in life. When all else fails, blur it a bit. And I do feel like I want to blur this a little bit. Just a smidge. So let me see. So this is with no blur. I'm getting this. But I want it to be a bit softer. So just a little bit. See, so it's getting more like jelly-like now. Like pop a glob it out like that. Actually, we could do this. If we soften it out like that. We can reduce the scale of it. Um, 
Yeah, something like that. You know, I'm gonna adjust the curve for the arms because it's slightly different. I want all this to be a bit further down. Is there a way of selecting all in this? I really wish there was. Because you have to like drag select but right from the edge and it's really hard to drag select right from the edge. There we go. Did I get it? Did I get you? God damn it. I think that was all three. Yeah, that was all three of them. Okay, so now if we move this guy over a bit, we should get a bit of a sharper end on it. That's a bit better. Still not great, but we're getting there. <laughs> Is the point of the note? No, it's month to make it as close to the real thing, or can you change it a bit? I want gummy bears with pointy ears. Um, the point of the node thing is just to make something each day. So we could adjust it, but I've never seen gummy bears with pointy ears, have you? Um, plus, all this is driven from this circle. So I'd have to have another shape to make the ears. See, because this circle starts... Actually, it's just the, just the head and the ears. Okay, you know, we could maybe make a slight adjustment for you. Let me see. Let me see. Slap in a cheeky little warp like we did before. This time directional warp. Put that in there. Um, actually, wait a minute. Put that in there. Because we want to adjust the shape before it goes to the transform so it's not on an angle. Um, wait, I put the wrong one in. Okay, put that there. And for intensity, I'm going to not crash. Good. Uh, I'm going to get a gradient. I'm going to get this gradient. This will give us a bit of a point. Rotate it, so that's the intensity. And now, if I adjust this, uh, oh wait, we need to rotate that warp angle. Let me just change this so that it's a different size. You know, what? I'm going to do it to this one because I can adjust the warp angle manually. Do -do. Okay, so warp angle. What angle is that on? Uh, Wait, you can't just see the angle, can you? All right, anyway. Let's copy this. Paste this into it so it's exactly the same. And now we should theoretically be able to adjust this. Yeah, see, it's got some slight movement. So if we set this to like 50, it'll go nuts. So we wind it down. Okay, now we need to make sure this has got um, a bit more length on it. Who are? Um, there we go. Now we've got little, little pointy ear, like little love heart ears. Is that better for you? Gummy bunnies. He wants gummy bunnies. God damn it! A gummy muzzle. Set off. <laughs> so much work involved. Right, we've got some slightly pointy ears now. Okay. I'm just going to soften off this gradient a little bit because it's it's quite harsh. Um, if I just blur it slightly, that should reduce how strong this is. Yeah, see, it's kind of rounded it off a bit more. See, really sharp, rounded. So yeah, we'll stick with that then if you want. And then I'm going to reduce how strong that is because they're really high up now. And we don't want it to be really high up. So we need to get our levels and just knock the white balance down a bit. Oh, we also need to get this shape and then sort of knock it inside itself a bit. And I'll show you what I mean by that. If I grab these, let me just reorganize. This is getting messy. We don't like a messy grid, do we? Oh God, we're almost an hour in already. Better get on with it. I was planning on making a few sweets. At the moment, we're spending a lot of time on one. Uh, all right, so speed run, guys, speed run. Let's do this as quick as we possibly can. So I want to figure out a way of getting this shape and getting inside it a little bit. I, that's hard to explain. What I'm going to do, I'm going to get a histogram scan. I'm going to use this to make a mask of this, basically. Um, it's not perfect, but it'll do for now. I'm then going to... Uh, what am I going to do? 
What am I going to do? I need to use a non-uniform blur. That'll let me... Uh, oh, I need to invert this. Wait, no, I don't. What am I doing? Don't uniform blur. Have I lost my mind? Why is that not doing what it normally does? Is that thing just having a moment? What's the gummy bunny called? You need to name him. Well, this... If you insist this is a bunny, which it's not. But <laughs> let's call it... I don't know, Jeremy. Jeremy the Jelly Bunny Bear. Jeremy the Jelly Bunny Bear. Okay? Squidgy. No, Squidgy. Come on now. It's like you never named a jelly before. Squidgy. Hello, Squidgy. Am I losing my mind here? This is not doing what it should do, is it? Shape. Just do a quick test. Disc. Non-uniform blur. Oh, wait. I'm an idiot. I'm such an idiot. I know where it is. I didn't plug it in. <laughs> that normally helps. There you go. So now, we're going to get closer to the middle of the shape. I'm going to use the levels to pinch that shape out a little bit more. So it's a bit more extreme. Like so. And now, we should be able to control this to sort of make our own little mask of the middle section so we've got that then we've got the middle section there and then if I use blend uh, blend this onto here and use subtract on this it will sort of cut out the middle see and we just reduce that a little bit uh, I'm going to Reduce that a bit more. Sorry, increase the dark on that a bit more. No, wait, which one am I doing? Uh, okay. Actually, will min dark and work better for this? Uh, do, do, do. Having pop proper brain farts right now, folks. Alright, subtract. We're going to use subtract. I'm going to do something like that. So then now I've put, plugged that in, it should give us a slightly better shape. There you go. Little ear situation going on. And then we can use this um, non-uniform blur to control how far into the ear that is. So something like that should do. And we can adjust the levels as well to make it even more refined. So we want it a bit smaller, which means I've got to push the white out further. And then adjust the grey to push it back out a bit. Something like that. It's not perfect. Super far from it. But something like that. Uh, it's 2020. He wants to get a bunny. He can be. He wants to be a bunny. He can be. Who are you to assume is a bear? Well, you know what? You've got a point. It's 2020, isn't it? Uh, it's the year of bears and bunnies and bunnies and bears. So call them whatever you want. Squidgy. Sh whatever. Share. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why I said share. I couldn't think of a name, okay? First name that came to mind was one of the easiest names to say. Share. And you don't want to share your gummies. So maybe that's how it all ties together, you know? Uh, I don't know about you, but I don't share my gummies. Sad that. They're my gummies. Let's move these shapes over here so we've got a bit more control of, over the uh, the mess that we're making. I like to have my source things off to the side so it's a bit neater and then it kind of follows a trail. Uh, save. Right. We might not get past the, the gummy bear stage. It's a bear. <laughs> yeah, it is a bear. Um, Alright, so let's give this little guy some eyes and a little mouth. I actually might make his head a little bit bigger. It feels a bit short. Is here, just a smidge down. They are just a smidge, just a smidge, just a little bit, just a lovely little bit. 
that's like that and then we're going to give him a little bit of an eye mouth situation when someone says gummies i always think of old ladies with no teeth Ugh. dude that's the wrong kind of gummy that's gummy smooches but you know i'm not going to judge if you enjoy a gummy smooch you enjoy a gummy smooch i will not judge although i'm pretty sure your girlfriend will because she's not gummy and she'll be like hey what's with all the gummy smooches you know so i don't know uh all right let's give this guy a mouth and some eyes he probably wants some eyes so we can see so again we're gonna we're gonna use the same shape as oh sorry that was right down the mic i have like this really sharp whistle sometimes when i say sure i don't know why um Speaking of no teeth, I feel like my teeth are loose. Is that what it is? Yes, I'm going to use the same shape. It's a bit cheaper if you keep using the same nodes, but it does get a bit messier. So just bear that in mind if you ever do this. Um, okay, so transform 2D. I'm going to try and go a little bit quicker. If I can. Um, but like I said, a lot of this I'm trying to remember on the spot. So uh, it's a little tough to just whiz through. But if there's anything that I'm doing, you're like, what the hell are you doing that for? Or what is it you're actually doing? Just let me know and I'll see if I can remember for starters and then see if I can explain what I'm doing a bit better to you. So we're going to set this to max light. It looks like he's holding a little leg. This is actually his nose. Um, but in order for this nose to show up properly, see at the moment it blends in with his head because his head's too far forward. So we need to go and use that levels that I added before to the head to reduce how strong that is. I actually didn't add levels to the head. That explains why it's so strong. Okay, so we use levels. Because this is all working between black and white, everything you do is kind of controlling the strength of the gray levels in between to see how high or low this is. So see, it's really quite pointy at the moment. If we use levels here, we can just reduce how strong that is. And then hopefully his nose will start to poke through. Look at that little nosy. Look at that lovely little nosy. So there he is, boop, little nose. He's got a little nose on him. So there you go, I'll make that a little bit bigger. So he's got a slightly bigger nose on him. Or muzzle, whatever you call it. Little, little bear mouth. He's got a little bear mouth on him. And then we're going to give him some eyes. Same way we gave him ears before. Um, I'm actually going to do this like this. It goes a little something like this. Actually, I'm not going to... If I, if I edit the transform on this one, it'll be kind of awkward because it's already a weird shape. Um, although... No, you know what? Sorry, we're going with that. I'm getting... For some reason, my Skype just opened. Okay, whatever. Did I click Skype by accident? Did you see me click Skype? That happens all the time. Where I'm I'm so used to... I said this last week. I'm so used to my computer sensitivity on my work computer that I always click things by accident on this computer. And it's a pain in the boot house. I don't mind telling you that. Oh, he's got a little, a little um, beauty spot going on. So these eyes, we're not, he's not going to have tiny beady eyes. We're just going to adjust it <laughs> and make him a bit bigger. There we go. Make sure that's in the middle. Um, 0 0.5. Whoops. Minus 0 0.5. And then 0. There we go. And then we're going to mirror that bad boy. Boom. He's got eyes. It's alive. It's alive! And I'm going to use levels to control the height of that again, because otherwise his eyes are going to be like bug eyed. So let's just adjust that. <laughs> yeah, see what I mean? Looks fine from the front, then you go, ah! What has he seen? What has he seen? I'm just dying to open Skype. Dying to do a pod tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, right, so we're going to adjust this height again. Just to make sure that we're not fully bug eyeing him. And we're going to reduce the distance between whoa, between the grey and the white here so it's not as strong. There we go. We're starting to get somewhere along the lines of Gummy Bear. I'm not overly happy with the arms still, but we'll figure that out as we go along. Uh, and the little leggies. Lovely little leggies. Right, what we could do... 
is hmm. I'm not sure actually if this will work or not but we can try and sort of extrude that a little bit I kind of like how he is right now though to be honest um, let me see let me see shape extrude This should only work if it's completely flat. But I'm curious to see what happens if I plug that into there. Ooh. It gives me the finger, apparently. There we go. See, so now we've actually got this little 3D shape and we can rotate it around and stuff. It's extremely powerful, this tool. But let's just fix what it's doing first. Okay, so we want it to be at 0 0.5. 0 0.5 so it's should bang on the front maybe not okay we want minus 0 0.5 is it yeah okay that's better whoa <laughs> he looks really funny doesn't he we don't want to give it a bevel we don't want to give it no bevel intensity a bevel curve. Uh, we'd like to rotate it. Is there a rotate option here? There is not. That's okay. Uh, what colour am I doing? I'm thinking, I'm thinking classic red. I'm actually going to have a variety of colours. I'm going to try and spread them out a bit. Um, but that's why I'm trying to do this just to see see how it looks if I sort of scatter this out a bit. I do want this extrude, this little bevel. Um, I just don't know if it will do what I want it to do. Let's just try something a second. A lot of experimentation, that's what this month's about. Trying to do things I've not done before in designer. As a little experiment. Read your favourite, that's good, I'm glad. I don't want to do that. Woo. Wee. <laughs> okay, anyway, had enough fun with that. Um, so that was ultimately pointless because if I change that to that, it looks exactly the same but on its side. So I'm going to delete that. Uh, I am going to. This won't work. This won't work at all. Is this what I'm trying to achieve? I've got I've got a thing in my mind I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to figure out if this is going to work or not. Max Lightning. Yeah, men darken. Please. He's a little piggy. I'm a little piggy. Uh, anyway, that was an accident. We want to... What am I doing? What am I doing? Uh... Oh, it is Max Lightning. Oh, I solved the order around on these. Basically, I want to add some distance behind it so that I've got like a bit of a slope behind the gummy. I just can't exactly remember how to do that right now. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a moment, just wait a moment. Not range, I don't want range, I want scan. Histogram scan is my bay, okay? I used to use it all the time. It's just great for making masks and stuff like that. Oh, that's creepy. I see you, said the clown. But anyway, uh, why am I completely blanking on what I'm supposed to be doing here?
So I want to get what's behind it to be there, but with that on top. Wait, is it just copy? Am I, am I being stupid here? And then use this as a mask. Swap these two around. Now that's a really nasty way of doing it. If you enjoy watching your work, definitely should do a bit more. It's dead relaxing. Oh, good. I'm glad it's relaxing. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's not relaxing for me when I'm trying to figure stuff out on the fly like this. But it's fun. It is fun to do. Just got to remember how to do it sometimes, you know? Uh, right, so I'm going to I'm gonna get a levels. No, I'm not. I'm going to get a levels now. I'm going to adjust this white so that's not so strong. Hopefully that will help me blend these together a bit better. Um... Why can't I remember what the hell I'm supposed to do? Wait, is it... It might be height blend, you know. It's been so long since I've used this. Uh, okay, put that at the bottom. Put that at the top. Ooh, look at that. It's fancy. So set the contrast to full. Oh, we haven't balanced. Now, what I'm trying to do is... I'm basically trying to give it, like little edge to it you know like the way gummy bears have a bit more height to them they don't just they don't just stop um but in order to do that i'm just trying to remember how exactly I basically want to give this like a nice soft gradient going on so again i'm going to blur this and the good news about these sort of speed materials is there's no actual pressure on them it's just a bit of fun so you guys get to watch me sweat for a bit. <laughs> Just tweak this a little bit so it blends a bit better. Let's see how this looks. This is probably going to look pretty bad, but let's see how it looks anyway. Yeah, of course it looks bad. It only goes so far. Um, oh, what I can do. Let me just see if this works. Whoops. Didn't want to do that. I'm going to move these to the side for a sec because there's something about that I liked. But there's a thing called a shape splatter node, which I forgot about until just now. Uh, is it shape splatter? I think it's shape splatter. And we can use this to drop this pattern in here, right? And you'll see it'll start to it'll start scattering it around. Um, so let me see. To do scale, we want the height. Uh, what's it called now? The height offset. Be full. Wait, no, we don't. Height scale. Okay, so there's a thing in here. I'm trying to remember what it does now. There's skew from background slope, I think. I can't remember, you know. There's something in here that helps it. Well, there's no shape in the background at the moment, but when there's a shape in the background, it helps it kind of conform and wrap to that shape. And that would have been cool to have. Um, but for now, we can just leave it as it is. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, I know what I can do to give it a bit more, a bit more life on the sides. I actually kind of like how round and tubby he is. So what we can do is, we, if we go to his body here, um, let me see. We got the gradient going. So I'm going to do it after levels. I think I'm going to go in with a curve. Any minute now. Please don't crash. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought we were crashing there. Saving time, folks. Save time. So, yeah. Curve. And if I put this on here, then I can go and try and put in a bit of a harder edge. Just at the very, very edge of it. I'm actually on the wrong edge here. I always forget which way around the curves go. Oh, actually, wait, no. Instead of curve, we could try a gradient. So I'm all over the shop tonight. I'm just trying to remember stuff. Things pop in, like, you know, random memories. <laughs> and I'm like, ooh, I remember. I used to do that. Um, okay, so if I... I've basically got the very edge here. If I lighten this a bit, that'll kind of create, like, a little lip. 
there. Which I don't want to do too much of. But let's just see if that helps. And it disappeared. Awesome. Oh wait, it's because it's set to colour, not grayscale. Oh god. Right, so we're getting... Anyway, we're, we're getting the lip. We're just getting it a bit too extreme right now. See, so like we could go, we could go the other way with it, give him like a really inset belly, but we don't want that either. We just want to give it a bit of height. Hey, our podcast has got 125 views today. Apparently, that's good to know, mate. So let's try and make this value a bit lighter so it gets a bit higher. But we don't want to go over the height of the middle part because then it won't be round. Let me just move that along a little bit. Oops, I was holding the Windows key instead of Alt. I always do that. Uh, right. And then I'm actually going to blur that out a little bit, just so that I've got a little bit of softness going on. I can hear a wild wifey in the background. Better do. The scariest creature of them all. The wild wife. All right, okay, so... You can see I don't want to blow it that much because then he just disappears into the background and we don't want that. So if I just reduce that quite a bit and then we just gradually ease it back in. Something like that. And then we can use uh, a mask to make sure that this edge isn't sharp. Uh, it is sharp, sorry, so that it doesn't just like soften fully off like it has done. Yeah, so let's just get a histogram scan again. Uh, put that in there. If you set both of these to like close to 99, you'll get a good mask. Most of the time. You can always go in and tweak it afterwards. Yeah, see, it's not, it's not perfect right now. How many gummy bears do you reckon you could fit in your mouth at once? You reckon you could do 50? Hmm. Gummy bears. They're not that big, but they're kind of cumbersome and weird shaped, so I'd say... You probably... I'd say when you get to 25, 30, you're going to start struggling. Because, trust me, I've eaten gummy bears by the bag before, and by that I mean I've ripped the top off and just jammed the bag in. Obviously the contents of the bag, not the bag itself. Um, but yeah, that's that's problematic. 50 would be an issue. Definitely. Uh, let's just get rid of this edge. I don't like this edge. I want to want to blur my mask a little bit. Um, maybe I can use the blur to control this. Oh, there we go. I was a step behind. Kind of miss his little rotund belly a bit now. So let's see if we can push his belly out a bit more. Uh, where's his belly gone? It's here, isn't it? So this gradient here, we're gonna we're gonna push it a little bit. Um, let's see. Hey, he's breathing. Breathing like a gummy bear breathes. That'd be creepy if a gummy bear started breathing. Can you imagine that? Uh, right, okay, so. Again, going to use a gradient. This just lets us ed edit the gradient we've already got. So delete that. I'm just going to push the white a bit more. Okay, so 
now if I put a grain in the middle, I can control sort of where the more higher parts are. So that looks a bit better now, doesn't it? A little bit. A little bit. Um, yeah. That looks alright. Like I said, we're not going for perfection. We're going for fun. And this is definitely fun. Just to play about. Uh, any of these that I've, I've finished that I really like or feel like have potential, at the end of November, I'm going to push further and make them, you know, like portfolio materials. But I can't see many of them doing that, to be honest, because they're just speed materials. They're just a bit of a goof. Uh, you can tell I could do 51 just to beat you. I agree. I, I think even if she couldn't fit them in, she'd find a way. Just, just to spite you. Right, let's give the head the same treatment we gave that body just now. See if we can anyway. Uh, so what did I do to it? I have lost it. Ooh. Okay, yeah, so I added a gradient, didn't I? After the levels, so let's go do that to the head. Could probably have the same gradient, to be honest. Whoa, maybe not. Aggressive gradient, didn't it? No, I like him the way he is. I'm actually just leave that gradient. I like him being softer like that. So what we can do, since we're running out of time, um, is we can just we can call him kind of Dunish, which is good enough for this. Uh, although I want to give him some more roundness to his arms I don't like the way this shape's worked out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to like the way I got a gradient in it before this one I'm going to do the same thing with rotate it so uh, so that he's got more of a round like tubular shape to his arm so let me just go to gradient, I'm going to get this gradient this time because it's like a mirrored version I want to use the same transform so that it goes in the same position. Although I need it to be rotated. There you go. And so now, if I use this, theoretically, I should be able to just blend it on top. And it should work out pretty okay ish. Which at this point of the day is all we can ask for, isn't it? Pretty okay ish. And blend that. Put that on there. I'm in full speed mode now. Just trying to figure stuff out. Multiply. See, so we go from having just this straightness to more of like a narrow center on it. And so now it should be slightly higher in the middle than it is in the sides. It's not that obvious though. Um, it is when I flatten it, so you can see the adjustment it makes. But it's not that strong of a of a an effect. So what can we do to boost that? Oh, it's because I knock it back down the levels here. So if we let the white go a bit higher on there again. The black pack so it knocks the thing down a little bit. Give them little gummy arms. That's a little bit better, isn't it? It's not perfect, but it's a little bit better. Sometimes it's all you need. I'm not liking how jagged this is, so that just needs blaring. That'll fix that. So let's go fix his legs. Fix his little leggies and delete this stuff. We don't need that. That's from before when we try and stuff out. Uh, yeah, so give this a slight, slight blur. It's going to give it a massive player, but then we go back in and we just dial that back. I always like to start stronger and then dial it back. It's easy to see. Uh, hold on a sec. I've been ignoring chat. Apologies. You saying you got, Yes, uh, I think he is saying you've got a big mouth. It's rather rude of him, if I do say so myself. Uh, who's Dunish? Okay. 
Okay, like communication pieces. So if people give you money, you would... Oh, are you trying to say commission? Uh, I don't know if I can commission pieces with my contract. <laughs> I'm your brother, though, so I can make you something. Uh... <laughs> there we go, commissions. There we are. He's speaking English again, folks. I mean, yeah, I could make you something if you had a request one day. Uh, if it fits one of the prompts, maybe. Right, see, so now we've smoothed that off a little bit with the blur. It just gives it that nice little... Nice little bit of softness. Okay, I don't like how sort of round that shape is, so let's just skinny it out a bit. And that curve's a bit extreme as well. Oh, it's just like City Pop. I like City Pop. Let's try and pinch the top of this a little bit. Um, We actually do want a little bit of that going on. And we can use a bit more blur to emphasize that end point a little bit. There we go. So I think we should be able to call our chunky little gummy dude kind of done for now. Um, might just skinny out his body a little bit width ways. I'm not judging him. I'm just saying, you know, it's a bit much. It's not always winter, know what I'm saying. So let's just add this to the end of here. Because we're running out of time. It's already quarter past nine. Uh, oh, hang on a sec. Uh, time when it's been waiting. <laughs> oh, I've been playing for loads. Oh, I get it. You're saying a funny joke. I keep calling it kind of done. And she's like, no, it's called Squidgy. You are funny, lady. Funny. Ha ha ha. Lady is funny. All right, I'm going to be skinny this guy in a little bit. Uh, set the width to 95. And again. Yeah, look at that. New svelte. Slimmer model. Before and after. That's his little Weight Watchers before and after pictures. All right, so let's call this guy done. We need to, uh, yeah... Yeah, I, I have an idea about the jokes, Jack. It's just your level quality joke. And, you know, there's only so many of them I can take in a day. <laughs> what Christmas request? Have I missed something? Oh, you're playing table tennis in 3D for Christmas. I get you. I get you. Okay. I get what you're saying now. Yeah, I definitely can't do that. Because <laughs> you said you want to be playing TT. I, I was thought you were talking about work. Um... Right, so yeah, let's go to the shape splatter node again. Like I said, I don't I don't use this node very often. It is a cool node though, so I want to try and learn to use it properly. Now we can use this and we can scatter them about and stuff. Uh, if I just put that on here. We've got a whole heap of gummies. Oh my god, so many gummies. But we don't have that many. Let's knock it let's make it at the moment it's sixteen by sixteen. Let's make it six by six. Oh not sixty-six. The delicious number of the beast. Uh, okay. Do that little soldiers in a row. Uh, and then we can adjust the scale randomness. So some of them are a little bit smaller, some a little bit bigger. We can adjust the position of them a little bit. You can go nuts with that, but you get loads of intersection and stuff. Uh, and rotation random. A little bit of... Actually, yeah, we can really bump that up, can't we? Now, height offset, we can adjust that to make them really stand out. But see, that kind of pushes it out of the material, and then that pushes them into the material. And that's handy if you've got something that they're on, you need to blend between. But at the moment, they're just on their own, so let's leave them as they are. Uh, height, scale, random. 
Some of them are going to be soft. No, we want them all the same kind of height. Now, conform to background. That's what I was saying about before. So if we had other stuff in the background, that would adjust it. It's kind of handy, actually. If you had, like, two of these. Let's duplicate this a second. If you had two of these, let me just change the... Uh, change the position of this. So this is in that position. That is in that position. If I set this as a background for that... See, they, they blend together, which is great. But the problem is you get a lot of, like, intersection normally when you try it with a tile sampler. But with this, you can use conform to background. And what that does is that will sort of blend these together a bit. So let me go look at if I can find that conform to background. Where are you? There it is. And it's, there you go. See, it kind of smooths it to behind it, which is kind of funky. It's not perfect for this. But, you know, it's handy for other things. Smooth conform background. See, so that kind of... This is like... This is a piece... Where is it? This is the arm of that teddy bear. But we don't want that coming through the jelly because that's not how things stack up in real life. But if you smooth the conformed background, kind of smooth that out. So now they're on top of each other rather than cutting through each other. It's pretty funky. I like it. Um... Now, the good thing about using these shape splatter nodes is that it actually gives you data. So it gives you information about the whereabouts of each of these pieces and stuff, which is really handy. Um, because, yeah, you, you won't be able to use that. So I think, let me see, shapes, oops. Splatter, see this data here? So if I use shape splatter to mask, for example, I can get this data and it will mask out anywhere where these bears are so see here there's like two of them have intersected so if i want to color just these bears one color i can do that um if i go to shape splatter um, oh what's that do oh cool i've never used this before it's got lots of stuff in it um okay cool let me just quickly see what this does so from this, I can get all sorts of information. Position, UVs, bound and box, shape index. Ah, so that's a handy one. Shape angle is really handy. You can use that to change the colors. So, uh, for example, if I wanted to color these, all these bears now different colors, I could create a gradient map. I could plug this shape angle into this. And I can change what these colors are based on the color of that. So if I went to let me see red I'll make black blue actually we don't want to adjust the black I'll make white blue then we get like different colored gummies going on so then if I plug them in here oh gummies are colored how awesome is that uh, so we could do stuff like that I guess uh, the reason that there's black ones is because there's two nodes here. But to be fair, I think there's a splatter node I can use to do that anyway. So I'm completely knowing chat here. What are we talking about? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. When you say node, it sounds like when Pingu talks. <laughs> node. <laughs> what does it say? Is it snood? Snowed? I forget what they say now. Uh, shape splatter blend. Oh, this is for actually blending these two properly. Cool. Well, I'm not going to use that. But still, it's cool that it exists. Uh, so I, I want to get shape splatter blend color. Not particularly useful right now. Um, I've never used this before. I'm not going to like this particular one. Just ignore that right now. Uh, nude, nude. Okay, fair enough. Apparently, penguins walk around saying nude all the time. How rude. How rude indeed. So, what I can do, I can either use this like I have done here, or I could use this to use uh, to make a flood fill node, which again, it's, it's expensive, but it's cool. And this gives me the data, which is pretty much the same as this data. Um, but I don't think you can plug it into this. And then use the flood fill node to create random colour, a random grayscale. 
Um, so if I did random color, already I could have multicolored gummies like that. But I want to control them a bit better so I could use flood filter random grayscale. And then I can use that to go into my gradient thing and get the same result I've got there, pretty much. Um, yeah, and then I can go and adjust it based on the different stuff. How cool is that? So let's go do that. Uh, get rid of you because you're a bit expensive. Put you down there. And then we're going to get you to do the same thing here. So, you know what? Just duplicate that bad boy. Control C, Control V. Plug you in. Flood fill, and then boom. So then we've got the same kind of situation. We can copy this. Plug in the second one. And we've got different colour gummies now. And then we can blend them together. Uh, whoops. Using the blend mask from this. Uh, where is it? Blend. Yeah, it'll be from this one. Is it this one? I can't remember. Yeah, choose this. Is that right? I think that's right. I can't remember now. Let's find out. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, experimentation is the key in it. Yeah, so see now every bear has got its its correct colours for itself. Sometimes there's weird intersections that you get. You're going to get that, but we can try and adjust that. Um, now, the question is, can we do this in a way where we can get rid of the background? Because it's annoying. So I've plugged the background into this, which means that this is using both the bear's information, right? There's just one bear's. There is, come on, there's both bear's. And then we can pull the background out of this through one of these nodes. So what's this one? Shape splatter to mask. That's what I want. That's what I've got. But some of the bears are still black, so I'm not sure why that is. Uh, how'd you learn all that? I baffled. Well, it's just through experimentation, through YouTube videos, through tutorials and stuff. Um, like I said, a lot of this stuff I'm going to be doing during November is stuff that I've not done a lot of. You know, like experimenting with this kind of thing. I've not done this very much at all. I've used designer a lot, but not like this. And I've not used designer properly in like a year. So it's nice to come back to it and just experiment and play around and see what happens uh, it's, it's good fun i like it right, let's see what else this splatter had to offer because i like it oh, hang on a second is this ah this might be the random scale grayscale might be worth pulling this black stuff from let me just quickly see if this affects this uh yeah okay that's what it is I want to feed a little levels into this. And then if I make that the thing instead, I can adjust how this behaves. There we go. See, I can adjust them now. Uh, and the background doesn't change. So if I just do this, make sure that none of these bears are completely black. But the background is masked out, so it doesn't matter, if that makes sense. So that's pretty cool. Um, right, so then let's go play with our gradient maps, change the colours a bit. Get some green ones in there. And see, it picks the, the hue of grey that's closest to that bit that I've selected and does that. Uh, you can make them... Is it interpolate? Yeah, you can make it a bit stronger by choosing interpolate. It kind of pushes everything a bit closer together. What's tomorrow's project? Tomorrow's project... Whoa, we have a screen for that. Let me see. Tomorrow we are going to be on fruit fruit so see what tomorrow brings all right we need more gummies i don't know about you it's a good thing to live by in life more gummies it's just it's that easy give me more gummies i will be happier uh, now we want to hmm, let me see 
I'd like to get some like little transparency and stuff going on, but we're not going to have time for all that stuff. But we can kind of fake it a little bit, I think. Let me see if this works. This probably won't work, but let's give it a cheeky little try, shall we? I am going to attempt the unimaginable. So we're going to get this. Um... Will this work? I'm going to mask this out. I'm going to put this on top. Just fix this a second. And we're going to multiply this. Wait, no. Subtract, subtract it? No. What am I actually trying to achieve here? There we go. Kind of faking a little bit of... A uh, little bit of depth to it. You want to pick the fruit. <laughs> it depends what fruit you pick. Pick a fruit and then we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm thinking bananas. Something banana based. I was asked today if it could be banana based by a colleague. Um, <laughs> but we'll see. Colleague and friend I should say. It, just sounds, it all sounds weird saying a colleague. Let's adjust the scales so they don't overlap. Oh, that was too strong. Too strong. Whoops, that wasn't the one. Wait. Yeah, actually, I I did select the wrong thing there. And see that they're changing colours based on the where they are. I love that. All right, so let's get some more in, shall we? Let's let's double this bottom one. So they're smaller, but now we can scale them up. So scale. We doubled the amount, so let's double the scale. Might be too big actually. Whoa. We done goofed it. Watermelon. Yeah, a banana. What do you want about? A banana based fruit is banana. Yeah, so a watermelon based fruit would be a watermelon, right? What, what point are you making there? <laughs> So that breaks the flood fill. We don't want to go in that big. 0.3. Doesn't quite break it, but it does group them up a bit too much. We don't want that. Uh, scale. Let's, so we'll use that scale, no overlap. See if that helps. I think what this does is it kind of scales things down so they don't cluster. Yeah, there we go. So it's fully separated now. See, none of them are touching. We can have a variety of sizes, can't we? Oh, I said a banana. Okay. I meant banana-based material, not a banana-based fruit. I feel like you knew what I meant, <laughs> swine. All right, come on. Show me what I want to see. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go to this one. I'm going to add some more in here as well. Scale them up a tiny bit. Now, let's see if we can go and change this a little bit funkier. No, we don't want to do that. Yeah, it's interesting playing with notes that you don't really use much. What I'm doing right now, anyway. Uh, make a fruit salad, and everyone's a winner. I guess I could. Yeah, it's, I guess see what happens. Fruit salad will be tough. They're all clustered together again. What did I do? I think I got greedy. Yeah, I started scaling stuff together. Let's, let's see if we can use that scale no overlap thing again. I 
should make gaps here, yep. And then hopefully separate the colours a bit more. But I just noticed this shape started to data. That's a mask. Pattern ID end range. Literally never used this node before in my life. That's oh, cool, you can randomly mask stuff out though, of the results of that. It's pretty funky. Um, now, yeah, these, these are all a bit samey, these results here, so I don't like that so much. Mm. Sorry, I got a bit quiet there. I was in a world of my, world of my own. Um, if you don't get to pick tomorrow, do you want to pick the next one? Well, we'll see. I mean, after after fruit, it's grain, and then pastry and drawing. So we'll see. There's there's plenty, mate. There's thirty. I'm going to be doing thirty of these buggers. So you know, there's plenty of scope for for change and improvement and whatnot. Let's just see what happens, shall we? I don't want this to have any full black information in it because that'll mess up the little bears. I'm having the opposite effect of what I want. There you go. And right, we're getting a lot of uniformity going on here. We don't want that. It looked better before. So it's this, it's this second one with the smaller one that's causing his issues. So we want more range like that, but we don't want as much black information going on because we get win it with the dark gummies then. And there's too many blues, so we want something like that. That's an okay range. And see if we can adjust that a bit to not have the jet black gummies in there. It's a funky little jam, isn't it? ESO by Harris Heller, in case you're wondering. Pastries, can you do an egg custard? Oh god, that'd be a tough one. Um, possibly, yeah. That'd be that'd be interesting. Very interesting indeed. Right, let me see if I can get these looking better than they are right now. So right now, I'm not overly happy with how they are. I'm not judging them as a people. I'm just saying it's not looking as good as I want it to. Uh, we want to make it higher so let's set the height offset a bit higher height offset random as well should help break that up a little bit so that we've got a bit of variation going on uh, we don't want this intersection going on though so we need to make sure that that is corrected through this actually on this one Play the background stuff, conform to background. If we fully whack that on. Yeah, we don't want to fully whack it on. It's very interesting results, isn't it? Smooth conform. Okay, skew from background slope, that might actually help a little bit. That kind of wraps things around the shape underneath it. Um, background slope smoothness. Hmm, I don't know folks, I'm not liking exactly where this is going. You can't spell it, but Call them a pan chocolate. Do you mean a pan au chocolat? Yeah, chocolate bread. Give that a go, I guess. I don't know. Pastry is a while off yet. Pastry is not until uh, 
the fifth. Uh, bonfire night. It's pastry day. So give it time. We'll see what happens. Uh, I want to scale these guys up a little bit. Without them all blending together. But they're already on the way to that. You know what? Pump them right up. Whoa, not that far. Not that far. That's the one. See, I know what you're talking about. Set the scale random down for now. Just so we can control this a bit better. What scale are these? Because I want these to be the same, pretty much. Because there's eight of them and the scale's on one. Let's set this back to eight. So tell you what, let's set this back to eight. Save this faffing. We haven't got time for faffing today. <laughs> um, and we can just give it a bit of scale random. Let's adjust the random seed on this so that they spread out a bit differently. The scale random is really drastic on one of these. 0.3 for that. And nothing on this. Wait, the scale's... Okay. All right, we're getting somewhere now. Okay, starting to get somewhere. Uh, okay, so let's see what happens next with this. Um, so we've got we've got two blending over already. We could add a, we could add a third one, try and fill in some space. But what I want to do first is just adjust this one a bit, so that we can try and get it looking um, a bit better position wise. So we can actually offset this. Try and fill the gaps a bit better. I never really used the shapes flatter node, so this is a good little experiment for me. Because, like I said, it's I, I use tile sampler all the time, uh, but shapes shape flatter gives more control over the height adjustments. I think, and I like the mask outputs that it does. They're pretty handy. Pretty funky little things indeed. Out of interest, if I go flood filter random colour. I just want to see how usable these random colours actually are. I'll just do that again for this one. That's pretty funky. Um, oh, I don't like what it's doing though. That is gross. Hey. I'm being a bit quiet, folks. I'm just a little bit, a uh, little bit intrigued right now. Okay, I'll undo that. This is why we experiment, folks. You un you you realise something doesn't work and you undo it. <laughs> it's always a good reason to do it. Uh, right. Okay. So this these aren't blending the way I want them to. But that's okay. Like I said, I don't use this node. I'm trying to learn how to use it more. So if we focus on this main shape splatter node here, because this has got both of them involved in it. And we can try and adjust things from here. Right, 1.37. Let's try that. We just don't want everything to be the same colour. That's a bit better, but we're still not, we're still getting groups of colour. I don't want that. So we can maybe try size. Wait, hang on a second. If we try this one, 
Size ratio by background. Slope. I might adjust the size based on what's behind it. I think, anyway. So if this is getting a bit quiet to watch, by the way, I'm just... My, my brain's... It's wearing, you know? The old hamster, he's running on his wheel, he's trying to figure stuff out, and he's not finding any solutions, so he's going, I don't know. <laughs> so this is very solid colours right now. We don't want this. Oh, it's this one causing the issues. Okay. Scale on the overlap does not seem to be helping that much. Oh, actually, it is helping a little bit. Let's see if we can get a bit of random rotation going on. Mm. I realise this is position, but I just want to adjust it a little bit. See, I don't want stuff like this happening, but you can. It's really hard to avoid that from background slope. Okay, that might help. This is gross though. Um, okay, height offset map multiplier. No, I'm not using that. Height offset. Height scale auto adjust. Whoa! Okay, so yeah, that, that'll bring in pretty strong values. We want to adjust that though. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to use that. Hat scale random, we can adjust that slightly to give us some more variation. I don't know how many more times tonight I'm going to keep using the same sliders, but I am. See, now that, we don't want this, where if you set conform to background full, it kind of smooths it out like this, which is great for some things, but not for this. Um, whereas if you go fully off, it just cuts through. So if you go kind of halfway... Kind of starts to lean between them. If this smoothing was off as well, it would be a lot harsher. But yeah, we do want smoothing on that. See, so that kind of like half blends between it. It's almost like that one's melted on top of it, which we don't want. So we're going to fully smooth the back of that. And then... I'm going to with background slope smoothness. That's interesting. Huh, okay. Um, and skew from background slope, but that'll kind of adjust it based on what's behind it, I think. That's pretty cool. But yeah, we're getting there. We're getting somewhere with it. It's just it's. It's a little bit gross. So what we can do, we can go and start masking things out randomly. Uh, if we go down to masking, mask random. You can mask from the background slope apparently, that's handy. So hopefully that would start to mask some out that are like intersecting and stuff. So that's masked everything out. Oh, because there isn't a background slope, I'm in the wrong one. If I go to this, wait, undo. Set that back to zero. Okay, now if I go to this one, and if I mask from background slope on this one, this might actually help us. Uh, set that to one. And then we can just gradually reintroduce ones from the back. So if this is at zero, it's got all the ones behind it that we put there. But if you start to wheedle them out, you start to lose some of them, which is pretty cool. Uh, but we want to, we actually want to have more. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking we go for a third one. <laughs> it's a bit extreme, but yeah, what we can do. Let's, instead of doing random colors like we are doing, maybe let's try and do it so that we've got, like in our reference, we've got green, red, and yellow. Should we try that? I think we should try that. So... 
Let's do it as a quick test over here first. Um, what is this? Oh, that was the bit on top, isn't it? Okay, so we're just going to go uniform color. And we're going to grab our red. Very, very red. But we're going to stick to very bold colors for now. This is going to be our green. Which is very green. Uh, right, so yeah. Whatever is in here. It's going to be red. Wait, sorry. Okay, um... Let me just grab this a second. I want to connect the second one to here. Okay, that doesn't work. Never mind. Okay, so this, yeah. The red ones are going to be there. And then... I don't actually need that there, do I? This one's going to be green. <laughs> okay, mate, enjoy. Delete that, and then for this mask, we're going to use this one. <laughs> oh, look at that. He plays one game of Warzone, and suddenly he's all soldier talk. Right, so now we've got two of our colours. Our red gummies and our green gummies. I know they're super bright right now. We're going to fix that in a minute. And then let's get our yellow gummies in. Which we haven't got yet because we've not made them yet. But we're going to go make them now. So let's just copy our sh uh, shape spotter. Wherever it went. So these are still connected, but they're not being used. So we can actually probably delete all that stuff in a minute. But for now, we're going to keep it there. Because we can probably use it for variation. Add some slight adjustments and stuff. Uh, okay, so this time, I'm going to give it another random seed. Because that that controls where, where these gummies spawn. Which is pretty handy. So if you see on this one, they're all that position. If I double click on this, see they've all changed. Even though it's exactly the same information, the random seed just controls where it starts to get that information from. Uh, and then now we can just duplicate this node, give this splatter data, and then feed that into here to be what controls our lovely yellow. Boom. That's, that's not a lovely yellow, that's mustard yellow. There we go. Okay. And now, obviously... That's not worked yet because we've not blended the actual height information in yet. What a goof I am. So I'll leave that there for now. Uh, yeah, we've not fed the background into this yet. So we've moved these over here so that everything's in the right order. Uh, this is actually the third one, so this down there. Sorry if this is getting a bit convoluted at times, by the way. Just sometimes when you're working with this kind of stuff, you just got to do what's on your mind with it and then fix it, clean it up later. But that's the joys of doing this kind of like quick, messy... Uh, materials like this is that there's not much thought going into it beforehand it's just a case of jump on see if we can do it in the two two to three hour window that we've got and then see what happens um so yeah this isn't exactly what i was planning on doing but it's it's turned out okay so far <laughs> sometimes that's all you need right so yeah we want to feed this in as our background height uh What has happened? What did I mess up? Hmm. I've goofed something up here, folks. It's giving the information, it's just not adding the, uh, the thingy. Just delete that a second. Okay. 
Okay. Anywho. <laughs> uh, so this is the background height. For some reason it's still showing me the... Sorry, it's still showing me the splat, splatter data as this. It should be showing me this. Um, which is fine. So let me just add the... Um, let me add this height. Move this height to here. We should see our new gummies appear. So we've got new gummies going on. They're all black at the moment because we haven't been given this colour. But then now they should have yellow. There you go. So we've got some gummy colours going on. Obviously they're really strong and you know vibrant right now. We're going to turn those down. Uh, reduce the saturation on them. Because even though sweets are normally quite vibrant, they're not that vibrant. <laughs> uh, and then knock the yellow saturation down as well. What was I doing with this again? This was a weird one. Right, we want to reposition where these are. So let's go to. Um, does this have a distribution? Yeah, pattern distribution. So let's plug this. Let's see if this little thingy works. If I invert the information from here, give that a cheeky little histogram scan. Wait, sorry. Give this a histogram scan. Just to solidify that stuff a bit. And then if I uh, invert that and feed that into the pattern distribution on this, it should hopefully prevent too much overlap. So that if I go to position pattern distribution map multiplier there, uh, it should should start moving these away from the ones that are already there theoretically but alas it doesn't <laughs> oh well. sometimes it just doesn't work the way you think it will and that's okay plus I need a coffee I don't know about you guys my brain is getting sleepy <laughs> Ugh, yeah, I'm not liking the results of tonight very much, but that's okay. It's day two. There's going to be plenty of nights like this where it just doesn't go to plan. And there's going to be plenty, plenty of nights where it goes way better than expected. So the fun part is sticking around to find out which one it's going to be today. Did that make any change, the pattern distribution? No. Uh, oh well. Maybe I could feed them all to the same one. If I change the pattern number with this, do you reckon it give me different outputs? Hmm. Nah, forget that. Forget that, folks. We're getting ahead of ourselves. <laughs> right, anyway, where was I up to? Yes, gummy bears. So we've got plenty of stuff going on, but everything's really on top of each other right now. So let's just adjust this. Uh, we want to position offset. There's a lot of um, a lot of intersection going on right now. We don't want that. This should be helping to avoid that, but it's not really helping that much because I'm not doing it right. Uh, which is fine. Oh, right, conform to background. Okay, that'll help with that a little bit. Um, but it, it does kind of warp them, but it's it, it's useful for this specific thing. Well, we don't like that. Um,
Hmm. Okay, we're in a little bit of conformity. Oh, I'm getting too tired to care right now. <laughs> Alright, so that's... Actually, is that caused by one of the masks? Yeah. That's that's stupid. That's my fault. Why have I got that in there? There you go. I had the wrong mask on it. Stupid me. But we're still getting weird intersections, but... For now, it's okay. Uh, now, we can make this a bit more full. A bit fuller, as the cool kids say. I'm going to try something a bit drastic. Let's just save this a second. Are these being masked at the moment? I don't think they are, are they? No. Because if they were masked random, you, you start losing them like that. Um... What we can do is we can control how many more there are, give them a bit more scale. So let's just make this to 10 and 10, just to bump it up a little bit. Because now that they're all the same color, it doesn't matter if they touch each other too much, because we're going to adjust that. Uh, so scale, 1.5. Okay, that's, that's looking okay. So 10, 10, 10. 1.5. Okay, we're getting somewhere. We're trying to fill out these gaps a little bit, you see. 10, 10, 1.5. Okay, we're starting to get somewhere. We're going to the scale random down a little bit because the scale's it's got a bit too small for me. What is this? Is this the MCA free? I don't believe this is on this playlist, sir. You can't just start playing things that are not on the playlist I was playing. <laughs> How very dare it. Right, let's play this nonsense and your beat one. Uh, right, sorry. Got distracted by the music. Yeah, so 1.5, 10, 10. Knock the scale and them down. Out of interest, if we knock the scale and them completely off, then we can go and tweak it a little bit. Tweak it up, you know what I'm saying? We just see how it looks when they're all fully sized and then we can just adjust that accordingly. Scale random. Why are we getting full on intersections though? Oh, that's another, another thing we can do as well. Um, there's probably an actually a setting in here for it. The height offset. We can adjust the height offset of each layer so it doesn't do that so badly. Now the problem is it goes into the ground because that's how this is set up. But we can control it with layers individually afterwards. So um, The problem with doing it this way though, not layers, levels. The problem with doing it this way is that it, it'll, it'll affect the data. So it'll mess up the um, the mask a little bit. Man, my brain's turned off now, folks. That is how this is. <laughs> Why has it already got information on it? The hell? Okay, so see, you can take each one as it was. Uh, let's just undo that a second. Our levels... So we can just control the height of each part individually. But really, you'd only want to do that with the bottom one. Uh, because the bottom one... If we gave these no variety in height between each other. Let's see, height offset random. Let's see, zero for height offset. Right. Zero for height offset random. So now it's all one level. We don't want because you get stuff like this going on. Um, 
Height scale, that might be interesting. Because height scale was just the, the actual size of it rather than the amount of height it's using. If that makes sense. It doesn't make sense to me right now. There is no background stuff. What am I doing? Oh, okay, right, anyway. Let's just try this as a test for a second. Levels. Plug you in there. Nothing's changed yet, so it shouldn't change here. But if I start reducing the white, these will get pushed back. That should rotate, and that's because... Oh, okay, it's using the skew from background, and this is the background, so it's causing it to rotate. Okay, that's interesting. So you learn something new every day, folks. Learn something new every gosh dang day. All right, so we will actually go for some... Uh, some height offset random... It's really interesting how much it affects the stuff that it's touching. Like I said, I don't use these shapes flatter nodes very much, so it's nice to have a play about with it and see what it actually does to a certain degree. So let's do the same for this one. Probably help if I wasn't using cores at the moment because I can't. Like you're supposed to do all your height stuff first. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm actually seeing color intersection, not so much geometry intersection. So that's what was confusing me. Okay, now scale, no overlap. If we rock that on full, what does it do? Okay, we don't want it that bad. Is there a position no overlap by any chance? That'd be handy. Uh, no. Alright, folks, I think we're going to call it soon. Um, because I'm getting tired. And I know it doesn't look great. It looks far from it. It looked better before, I think. Um, but what we can do is we can just use the little guy that we made on his own. Um see how he looks because on his own he wasn't too bad <laughs> just as a quick test very quick test before we go I'm going to just try and do this the way I would normally do it and see if that works it does have caveats but I'm going to see if this helps at all um, so normally I would use a tile sampler, which is this one. And this doesn't give you like nice mask outputs and stuff like that, so it's not as it's not as great to use. Um, but you know, it, it gets the job done. Ten by ten. Uh, actually, let's bump the scale up on this. Actually, one's okay. I forgot it defaults at 0 0.8. So give it one. Um, position random. See, so it gets really clustery, which is annoying. But then you can go and you can mask out a bunch of them. And that's when you'd use a duplicate that would have a different random seed, so it would be in the opposite way. But you can also use this thing, reverse rendering order. So what that would do, if I duplicated this, and I reverse the rendering order on this one, that would pretty much make sure that they don't intersect too much. Uh, so you still get it, but not as much as you would. If you go to max lighten, you get this kind of intersection going on, so you never know. Let's have a quick go with uh, messing with rotation random and all that kind of stuff. Just whack it on full. Same with you. Rotation random. Whack you on full. And then let's get a third one, shall we? This third third one's gonna be a bit tricky because it's um 
Well, we can use this as a distribution map like we did before, but hopefully it'll actually work this time. Oops. Come on, be nice. There we go. Okay, pattern distribution map. And we tell it the pattern image distribution to use the distribution map. And that way it only puts them in the parts of the map uh, which, you know, are, are masked. So hopefully that should mean that if you then blend that together, it should be filling the gaps. It should, theoretically, it should be filling the gaps. Uh, it's a bit messy, doesn't always work. But let's see what happens, shall we? See, so it's only really spawning them roughly where things aren't. It's not perfect, it's far from it. But it's doing an okay job, you know, the poor little thing's trying. We can actually adjust this afterwards as well, so if you watch... Uh, if you take a look at this one... We can... For example, if we blurred this, you'd get a different result. See, so there's that one, and then there's that one. Because it's got more data to work with then. Uh, but then you're going to get more intersections. But this is like I was saying before, we can actually adjust the, the overall colour of each of these. Uh, you know, the, the, the whiteness of it. So then they're in different layers then. So that's the bottom layer. Uh, we can give... Let's give the bottom layer a, a lower colour than we've just given it. Uh, so what we give it a 0 0.6 okay so let's give the middle one 0 0.8 and then the top one can be one um, that way it should in theory stack quite nicely and shouldn't have much intersection because it's stacking quite nicely this is going so slow tonight right yeah okay so there we go so now if i was to use that let me see how could i get the colours out of this. Uh, well, the same way I got a mask out of this one. I could do that to generate the colour mask for each of these. It's not ideal, but it does the job. So, um, that was the combination of both of these. But if we do one pair one, that should give us a mask where we can have our colours. So let's just go see if that works, shall we? Because I'm pretty keen to finish tonight. <laughs> I'm getting a bit sleepy. I'm, I wouldn't mind a brew, you know. Very English, you see. I like a brew. Right, so if we give that the colours for the first one. Just set that to that for a minute. Um, yeah, I'm going to set my, uh, my height as this, so we can test it. Whoa! That's a strong boy! Yeah, I forgot. I need to adjust the height for this. It's a bit extreme, isn't it? But we'll sort that momentarily. Oh, sorry. I, I keep doing that. I don't mean to keep knocking the uh, knocking the old microphone there. Just knock these levels down. It's not going to work, is it? It's not plugged in. Okay. I see what I mean about before, about the different heights that we've got going on for the different layers. So even when they're all bundled together like this, you should still be getting different height variation going on. Should. Yeah, it's not perfect. Far from perfect. Very, very far from perfect. But yeah, it's just nice. It's nice to play about and experiment with this stuff from time to time. See, so yeah, a color one, color two. Just duplicate this. And then color three. So duplicate this again.
So it's far from ideal, but it's getting there. Uh, now, I don't like how close the yellow ones are, which I think was the third one. Yeah, there's really bad close to going on top left here. That's because you can see on here it's got lots of white information there. Because it's it's clustered underneath. We want to invert this. So yeah, we're introducing the yellow ones. Actually, the yellow ones are overwriting the green. That's interesting. What did I do to mess that up so badly? And we've got black ones there. What, what have I done? <laughs> um, delete that. Okay, so for some reason I've actually got the same thing twice here. Have I actually placed these in the same spot? Did I forget to random seed it? It helped if my computer wasn't going so damn slow right now. Well, I'm using the distribution map as well, and I and that's not that's not helping for this case. Not really. If I reduce the blur on this, will this help? So, so at the moment it's trying to place things where the green things are, and I don't want that. It's supposed to place them where they aren't. Oh, anyway, I'm tired. <laughs> let's let's just stick with random on the position on this. Let's change where that position is by moving it. I do not like these clusters, man. I wish it wouldn't do that. It's one of the few things that's really annoying about this software. Um, if we change the mask random. Well, that just ruined that, didn't it? I don't like that at all. That's not good. It's not good at all. Alright, let's just quickly change the result we got from before. Put that back over here, which I think was this one. Um, was it you? Oh, you know what, folks? I think we'll just bugger the job up right at the end. <laughs> let's just show our friend here. I'll go back in and sort this out at some point, but for tonight, I think I'm kind of struggling to get it to uh, to do what it's supposed to do, and it's making me sleepy. <laughs> um, what do we do, folks? What do we do? Do 
Do we use this one that we had going before? I mean, the results were okay. Yeah, I might get some vests soon. But the thing is, I've, I've got to finish this in some way or another. So, let's see. Why is this levels messed up? Um, right, this height. We used this height before, didn't we? Let me see if I reconnect this to there. Okay, that didn't work. I've proper balls this up. <laughs> right, let's just colour our teddy. Let's just call it our single teddy. Um, and then see where we go from there. So like just like before, I'm gonna mask out where he's where his outer bits are. Uh, and then we'll use that to control the colour of them. Let's just make him the red one. Red dude, let's give uh, let's give a clear background just to be fancy. So let's make an output node. Uh, we'll set this to opacity. Opacity. There we go. Label, and then go, put it in the material group. And I'm going to set this as an opacity map. And now we can also use that same mask that we just made wherever it's gone there we go set that as the opacity mask and that will make sure that the background goes invisible so we first we have to make sure this is uh, set to opacity there you go so now we've got a little gummy dude um, let's do that little thing we did before where we put something on top just make it look a bit fancy oops bit of <laughs> a little bit of jelliness to him not much um, I wonder actually if can we use a curvature node I might be talking crazy here but this might work no, of course it won't work what am I talking about yeah the sleepy's getting to me <laughs> I will look after myself all right just let me check this a second Okay, min darken gives us kind of a nice result where it's like deeper in the middle. But we kind of want the opposite of that. I feel like. I wonder. Could I use this? Oh wait, yeah, I should be using that as a mask. That was a direct thing. And then I can use an HSL node to get a lighter version of this red. Which you could then drive with the mask. Don't go overboard with it, but yeah, because we just we can't get like transparency on it, so that's the best we can do for now, I think. Um, right, folks, yeah, I think um, it's not great, but I'm gonna leave it there for tonight, I think.
because you saw we were experimenting, we were trying to get stuff going. It didn't quite go to plan. Sometimes it happens, that's completely fine. So you just got to accept it and you got to move on. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, let's give it some ambient occlusion first. We haven't given it any at all. And that's not nice, is it? It's not nice to give one thing to one thing and not to another. I mean, occlusion. Give him some shadows. Did that make a difference just now? Uh, and then roughness. I think the roughness is okay for now for the jelly. Uh, right, yeah. Okay, so that's what we've got for now, folks. It's not it's not great. There's going to be days when it's not great. But this is one of them days. <laughs> but yeah, that's what we've got. We've got our own little gummy bear dude. There was lots of them. They got a bit messed up. Uh, and I just ran out of time to fix it. But that's alright. I'll fix it at some point in the future. Uh, yeah, but for now, folks, I think that's me. So we can... I think we can still take off candy from the list. It's not perfect, but it's been done. So, boom. There we go. Nice little bit of candy on the list there. Uh, so yeah, thanks a lot for watching, folks. I really appreciate it. Um, tomorrow is going to be fruit. So let's see what tomorrow brings. It could be bananas, could be watermelons, could be pineapples. We just don't know. We do not know. So yes, I will see all you lovely people tomorrow. Thanks a lot for joining again. See you later. Bye-bye.